Oh. Good morning, everybody. Today is a beautiful day, but it's been, um, the forecast surely hasn't been doing very good for us, and the weather in general hasn't been doing very good for us for haying. Um, I want to show you my field even in a few minutes of the hay that I finally got off that field. Um, I think it was in the afternoon of my last video where I finally did get that off and bailed up. But today I want to talk about Bill. Bill is my Belgian horse that I've had for a few, several years now. And he has been a, a good horse, really good horse. And, but he has had some issues with needing to go fast. So when he's working with his teammate, he tends to go faster than he should. Um, he just likes to get right out in front of everybody else. And so because of that, I like to do a few things to settle him down before I hitch him up with the t his teammate. So today I have my stone boat and some stones on him and quite often I will take him even on the empty stone boat and go around the field but he likes to go so fast um, it, I feel that it works better to have some weight on it. So today we have the stone boat with the weight and we'll continue working him as I talk a little bit. Cast out. So as you can see, he still wants to run. And what I need him to do is to slow down and just lug this load without running. Um, I also am trying to get the energy out of him so that when I hitch him on with his teammate, whoever that might be, he will just walk and not have the need to go really fast. I cast up. Oh. As you can see off to our left, the hay field that I was working on in my last video is finally cleaned up, which is a great sight to see. Cut stop. Oh. So as you can probably hear, Bill is huffing and puffing pretty good from this heavy load that's behind him. But uh, it is just what seems to work best for him to do this two or three times around my little circle here so that he can get rid of some energy. And then I will hitch him up to the team and I'll show you a few other tricks I've tried over the years that have somewhat helped with him to get him to walk better with, with his teammate. Oh. Even today, he's not being very patient. He's thinking he's got to go and when I want him to stand here. And being a Monday morning, um, that is the way he is sometimes because he's had all weekend off. Oh, so we'll continue on a little bit more. I cap it out. eventually he does slow down. I must caution people that even though this is a great way to, to work a horse that's kind of a fast horse, has a lot of energy, um, one needs to be a little bit cautious as to how much weight to put on the stone boat. So if you're going to try this with your horse, I would suggest using just the empty stone boat to start with and then add weight accordingly so that there's never more than he can handle. You must remember with Bill, he does a lot of logging, he does some pulling at the horse poles, and so he is used to this type of pulling, and uh, he doesn't have a problem with this load, but it's actually a fairly heavy load. If you watch him start this load, you'll see. It caps down. Oh. Of course it's different for every horse but I feel for him that it is better to have him pull a heavy load like this as opposed to going on a light load. When he goes on a light load he tends to want to run all the harder and it's harder to make him walk. Um, but a horse 
that is doing that is running or walking really fast ho oh, will actually lose a lot more weight than a horse at a calm walk and so by having him pull this heavy load ow, oh, very short distances i believe he will lose less weight than a, if he was out in the field running around on a light load and cap us out Oh! I cast up. Okay, well, Bill is resting here. You can hear him puffing and puffing there. And, you know, when you hear a horse huffing and puffing like that, in some ways it seems cruel, it seems mean to have a horse do that. But it's really one of the best things a horse should be doing. Um, the secret is to be that it must be temporary. So when he's breathing hard like this, you kind of want him to be back to his normal breathing in a short period of time. Um, if I was to tie him and let him rest, you know, and within 10 minutes, I want his breathing to be back to completely normal. And it would be. Um, so anyways, but that's kind of another story. Uh, but that's good to see that breathing heavily. So I'm like, ho, ho, Bill. Ho, ho. So I'm going to show you a couple things here on his harness. And I'll show it again when I'm, when we, hitched, uh, when we, we put his teammate with him. So I have three sets of lines on him right at the moment. These brown lines are his single lines. So there's one of them, each of them goes to a, a single bit. You know, oh, each of them goes to the bit. Then I have these leather lines right here. This is his team line. You'll see this is where it splits and that's his team line. But I have one other line on him. It is a line. This is a bio oh, type of line. Doesn't matter what kind it is, but it goes when I'm using it, it goes to his bit. So this would snap right into his bit and the other side of this would snap into the other side of his bit. And this ring goes through this line and it's directly on him, ho. Oh. And I will show you better when we hitched up, I hope. So this ring has a rope hitched to it. And this ring, I mean this rope, when it's hitched up with his teammate will actually go to his the heel chain on the teammate and I will when I hitch him up I'll try to explain that even better um, this is a trick well no this is a how oh, this is something that's been used for a long long time it is actually called a hold back strap oh and years ago when a lot of farmers would go out with big hitches of four six eight horses they would use those holdback straps on the, the wheel team, which is the team next to the implement that they're being pulled. And, uh, but it's also a good tool to use for even a team. And I'll explain it a little later on how, when we have the team hitched up. I'm a little bit surprised on how poorly he is standing today. Um, like I said, he's, he's had the weekend off. But he is not doing very good as far as standing, and he is generally just such a good, good horse to stand. So he needs a little bit more time on the sled. Oh, I caps out. Oh. Personally, I think Bill has some anger problems too. <laughs> He's not very happy today. Okay, I guess we'll put him away. Then we can hitch up the team in a little bit and I'll try to explain my whole back system a little bit better for you. Before that, this was a couple days ago. First, the first hay is going into the barn this morning and we have some help here with us today. Um, 
um, this is Rob, and he um, used to work for Jim when he was 13 years old, and Jim was about 21. Back then, it seemed like a huge age difference, but now things have leveled out a lot, but Rob still seems real young to us because he's in such great shape, and he's really active, and he decided to come pay us a visit, which we really appreciate. He came out of his way to come up here, and um, we have had a wonderful visit, and caught up on things past and, past and present, and um, Rob has offered to help, so we're so happy to have him. This is my friend Robbie. Robbie was my very first employee. Second. You had some guy before. Okay. 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 Well, he didn't last very long. No, no, no. Yeah. Robbie was, I think, 14 when he started working for me years and years ago. He worked for several summers, and he was a great worker. Great, great, great guy. And anyways, he has been... You are... No, I'm not going to say how old you are. It's been a long time, long time since you've done anything with horses or anything like this. So I, he's here for a visit today, and you saw him unloading, help me, helping me unload hay. And so we were in the barn, and I'm going to go work a little bit later on, as, and he's going to take off. So I said, I uh, think you remember how to harness a horse. He said, well, I, I think so. And it's like so, riding a bike. Just like riding a bike. Yeah. And so he harnessed up uh, Bill for me just for practice, and now he's going to harness up Block. So I just want to show people that here's a young man that worked two or three summers um, 35 years ago. Quite a few more summers than that, I felt like. But yeah. Okay, well, yeah, but a long time ago. <laughs> 35 years ago now. Yeah. And he hasn't we're harnessed gonna, a horse. We're going to fact check this afterwards, right? <laughs> he hasn't harnessed a horse since that That's time. That's true. That part is true. And so, there again, as, as you um, possibly consider working horses, you did it when you're younger. Can you still do it? I just wanna, here's living proof right here. It still can be done. So Robbie, go ahead and, and harness that horse. All right. So I did have a practice try. So one, this is my second harnessing in 35 years. I didn't tell him, but this is actually the hardest horse to, to harness because he, he weaves all over the place sometimes. Look at him, throw them harnesses over his shoulder and up in the air just like he's done this before. My goodness. It is really hard to believe it's been 35 years since you've harnessed a horse, Robbie. I wonder what it'd be like driving these things again. Uh -huh. For you, a piece of cake. Yeah. I remember, I remember you helping me in the woods and you drove the team in the woods. Okay. Tending hay and raking hay. Yeah. All that good stuff. Some of the best summers I ever had. That's just because of Brenda's cooking. <laughs> I didn't cook much for him. And, and her pies. Uh, so Robbie comes into the house when he gets got here yesterday and he says, you have any pie? <laughs> it is one of my favorite things. So on um, Bill, he was hitching up the Cooper, and I said, you know, I don't recall having Coopers back when you were helping me. And he says, no, you didn't. And I said, well, how do you know what to do? He says, oh, I just figured it out. And he did. Well, I will have to brag and say he's the president of a company right now. So, you know, he, we, he knows how we, to figure things out. Should we promote your company? Oh, yeah, do a, do a promo with the shirt. Hey, here's the cover that. Northern Forest Center. That just rolls around. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Use my open eye. Well, maybe we could give, have Robbie give us a, just a brief overview of his, the company he is part of. Yeah, so the, the, the organization that I run is, is called the Northern Forest Center. And a lot of it comes from me working with Jim and Brenda way back long ago. And, and uh, some of the work we do is make sure that we have good markets for forest products. So people who are you know, loggers, contractors, truckers, you know, it's a good place to, to send good saw logs and add value to them. Um, looking at wood heat for energy and 
um, or wood products for energy and tourism across uh, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and, and Maine. And then increasingly, we're looking at uh, how to keep young people in, in rural communities. So making sure there's broadband and quality housing and um, good, solid businesses that allow people to, if they grow up and they go away, give them something to come back to. So it's a pretty good, That's pretty good great. thing to do. All right, so there's your horse. Perfect. Thank you so much. Glad to do it. Well, we sure have enjoyed having you here, Robbie. Yes. I don't think anybody else calls him Robbie. We still call him Robbie because he's not 14 anymore. And <laughs> it used to be that the age difference was huge between us, but now it's like... Not so much. Not so much, except he see, still seems a lot younger than us because he's in great shape. <laughs> Okay, we are up in the pasture now. This is a pasture. I'd clipped a portion of it uh, about a week or so ago. And we have a little bit more to clip here, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to explain a little bit more on the situation I have with Bill and what I do about it. So, I had explained some, some of it earlier. Um, this, this strap that I'm using, which is called a hold back strap, uh, a buck back strap, there's a bunch of different names for it. Um, but it is just, all I use for this is just kind of a temporary thing. I'd like to get a really good one made up. And I'd also like to thank Zach, uh, a friend of mine from Tennessee, actually, that I uh, messaged him to um, get to see some pictures of the one he used because I know he used one of these and I have actually known about these for years and it's been used for years but I've never actually used one in this way. I've used them sort of this way but not quite this way. So I'm going to explain how this works and to me this this does work really good so I thank you Zach for helping out there. So what I used for just a temporary setup is I have a this is just a, a set, this is from a set of team lines. It's the short line. Um, and this goes from this bit here and this is the center um, buckle, which cannot hitch onto the bit. So I just ran a strap there and hitched onto that. And that just goes around him on the bottom side underneath the check rein. Come here, Bill. Right. And then it comes right up to here on his other bit. So from the back side, I will try to explain how that works. So you have to make sure your lines are above that strap and the ring that's there. And that ring is hitched to that rope, like I said, and it comes down here to a snap and hitches onto Buck's heel chains. So that's adjustable by even hitching it in a different spot or tying a shorter rope. If you were to just get a straight strap, you could put a Conway buckle on it and then adjust it that way. So we'll start up through the field and I will try to explain how that works. Because I worked Bill on the stone boat, he doesn't have quite the energy he had first thing this morning, but still he just tends to be a faster walker. So I think what I'm going to do so maybe I can show how this works better. I'm going to disconnect it for right now. So I disconnected it and just hung it back up on his britchin. And I'm going to show you what happens with these two when I drive. I cap step. Now Buck has not worked for several days also. Uh, and because Ken has worked, this morning, he's a little bit slower than he normally would be. But if you watch the evener, you will see that his side of the evener is ahead of Buck. That means he's walking faster than Buck. And I'm actually putting a fair amount of pressure as I'm trying to hold him back. Now I do have the lines adjusted. Oh. The lines are adjusted such that I have more pressure on Bill than I do Buck, and that's helping me some, but there's still, Bill is definitely still walking faster than Buck. A right, couple step. Couple. I am very particular about my evener. I'm watching the evener all the time to make sure it is even across. That means the two whipple trees should be lined up. And right at the moment, they actually are quite well. Um, and I'm sure that's because of what I did with Bill this morning to work him on that snowboat. Oh, 
but I'm going to hitch on to that strap and show you how that works just the same. So I hitched it on that link right there. Uh, I actually know it's a little bit, it could be a little bit better, so I'm going to go back to the next link right there and see how that works. Bill always has a habit of, and I do not like it, but he has a habit of as soon as he stops, he backs up a step. So that's why you'll see the evener is so off like that. A lot of people could care less what the evener looks like, but for myself, I'm very particular. I like the evener to be even. A tough step. Okay, as we're walking up through the field, they are walking really nicely side by side most of the time. Any horses, when you're walking like this, if you're watching the evener continually, you'll notice that if one is always, it's just never perfectly even, and that's okay. Catch up. So this is just one of my pastures and every year I try to clip them after they've been chewed down pretty good. So there's not a lot of feed here and uh, it's very easy to mow, but it's just one of those things that need to be done. My whole back strap on Bill seems to be working really well. Um, what it basically does is relieves me of pulling really hard on him to make him walk the speed that he should be walking and it just takes a little pressure off my hands which is really nice. I think maybe if I had him at a younger age when I purchased him I might have been able to get him so he's not quite so hard mouth but both of these two are actually quite hard mouth and it's just something I just have to live with and this is one tool that helps me live with it a lot easier. I don't use it all the time, just once in a while I'll use it. There are some faults with it also. It seems like when you're using it, especially if you get a horse that's really hard mouth, it's a little bit hard to steer them because they are pulling so hard on that holdback strap that it's hard to um, tell them which way to go, left or right with your actual lines, but it's not too bad. I think today, since I had taken Bill out on the stone boat, he would have been perfectly fine without the holdback strap. And I prefer not using the holdback strap. So whenever I can give him a little bit more work, I like to do that so that I can steer them and drive them without a whole back strap on. But it's really nice to have once in a while to be able to use to rest your hands. So I'd love to hear from any of you horse people out there that have picked up some other tricks or some ideas as to how you can get one horse to walk a little bit slower so that they walk with their teammate good. Because I know this is a problem for a lot of people. So I'd love to hear. Put it in the comments below if you have any other ideas. I do hope you enjoyed this video for today. We shall see you next time with something else. Have a great day.